Welcome to Open Pediatrics Nursing World Shared Practice Forum. My name is Cheryl Toole and I'm here today with Dr. John Whiting. John is the director of the Nursing Patient Services Medical Intensive Care Unit, the Biocontainment Unit and Life Support Program at Boston Children's Hospital. John is a member of the American Academy of Critical Care Nurses and led his team to the achievement of Gold Beacon status, the highest designation awarded recognizing exceptional care, outcomes, satisfaction, and healthy working environment standards for excellence. John serves on numerous multidisciplinary councils and committees, including, but not limited to, nursing pharmacy and therapeutics, ICU governance, nursing administrator on duty leadership council, and the emergency management team. John is responsible for the clinical and administrative operations for the medical ICU, policy and procedure development, quality and cost effectiveness, and high reliability practice and safety standards. In addition to this, John is the nursing director and was instrumental in the development of the first biocontainment unit at Boston Children's Hospital. Through this work, John has facilitated the training and implementation of policies and procedures around emergency responses. The biocontainment team at Boston Children's Hospital was first activated during the second largest Ebola outbreak in history in 2014, and most recently during the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020. John, thank you for joining us today. To begin our discussion, as the nursing director of the medical ICU at Boston Children's Hospital, when did your practice or focus expand into the area of biocontainment and why was the biocontainment team established at Boston Children's Hospital? Thanks, Cheryl. It's great to be here today and talk about this team. Um, as you said, the biocontainment team at Boston Children's Hospital was established in 2014 in response to one of the largest Ebola outbreaks the world had seen. The threat of Ebola was becoming more apparent as several Ebola patients were being seen in hospitals throughout the United States. Boston Children's Hospital recognized us early on as a potential threat and identified the need for a specialized team of clinicians who were trained in treating patients with highly infectious diseases. This dedicated team of nurses and physicians were recruited from throughout the hospital in many different specialty areas. Since the team was developed, we've trained quarterly in high-level personal protective equipment, or PPE, to establish best practices and guidelines for the care of highly infectious acute patients. The quarterly trainings have consisted of high-tech simulation to guide practice and create guidelines and protocols for safe and optimal care of patients with highly infectious diseases. Our simulation days also consisted of team building exercises, guest lecturers, and group discussions. COVID-19 allowed the team to move out of the virtual realm and into the clinical areas, sharing the expertise gained through their training. Cares and procedures that may seem basic, such as basic drawing of labs, obtaining x-rays and ID placement, became much more high risk for the clinician due to the increased risk of exposure with this disease. Through extensive simulation trainings, we have been able to evolve our guidelines and protocols on caring for these patients with extreme focus on safety for our patients, our clinicians, as well as the community at large. Well, that's certainly no small task for sure. You described the training and preparation developed for the care of patients with Ebola. I don't think any of us could have possibly imagined that the world would be facing a new threat in the form of a catastrophic pandemic in 2020. How did this work by the biocontainment team model change to rapidly respond to the threat of COVID-19? That's a great question. As the COVID-19 crisis began to become more evident and we witnessed the severity of the crisis from around the world, leaders at Boston Children's Hospital saw an opportunity to use the team to train, educate, and support staff throughout the organization to safely care for patients with COVID-19. We knew that through our training, the team could safely care for these patients, but it was still unclear of the amount of patients that we would be seeing at a pediatric institution as this disease was primarily in the adult world. We were able to learn from other areas such as Seattle and New York as they experienced the widespread capacity issues that hospitals around the world were facing as they attempted to manage the massive influx of COVID-19 patients. It was at this point that we realized that the biocontainment team would be unable to care for all of the COVID-19 patients that we would potentially be seeing here. 
and that their expertise may be of better use in educating and supporting frontline staff in the care of these patients. Knowing that the proper use of personal protective equipment is essential in preventing the transmission and spread of this disease, it was apparent that the use of this team who had been training for these types of infectious disease scenarios for so many years would be essential in supporting the needs of the organization. The team was activated and deployed around the institution to educate and support frontline staff in the use of personal protective equipment, assist with patient admissions and transfers, and ensure that the frontline clinical and support staff were adequately prepared to safely and confidently care for these patients. The nurses from the biocontainment team were deployed around the hospital as site managers. These site managers were used to oversee the donning and doffing of staff in the appropriate personal protective equipment and to help to identify areas of improved safety within our processes. The biocontainment team, along with the infection prevention and control, helped in guiding practice around personal protective equipment and educated frontline workers on the ever-changing guidelines being established by the Centers for Disease Controls. There could be days when the guidelines would change every hour, and that would be up to six or seven times a day. The biocontainment team was available throughout the hospital on all shifts for any supportive needs in relation to COVID-19. The team helped in guiding practice while educating and supporting staff. The hands-on educational approach taken by the biocontainment team gave other frontline staff the opportunity to witness and to learn the proper techniques and safety guidelines that were being put into place. This education helped in building confidence and decreasing anxieties around the care for caring for COVID-19 patients. Thank you so much, John. We're going to pause now to turn to the audience to ask a question. In your response to your question, please leave your city and country location. Our question is this. Do you have a biocontainment team available 24 seven to support patient care and clinical staff needs related to COVID-19 or other infectious diseases? And what training or experience is required of the nurses or clinicians on your biocontainment team? John, were the nurses on the biocontainment team only used for resources for nursing or were other disciplines also involved? So the biocontainment team has collaborated with all disciplines within the organization. We have contact with patients and families. Extensive training has been done with non-medical support services, such as environmental services, food services, and security, to name a few, all essential to the ongoing operations of the facility. Emergency management and infection prevention and control have also been essential in the activation for COVID-19. Their collaborative efforts have helped in guiding our education and support as the team has worked closely with them in identifying the needs of the organization. The team has been adaptable to many changes recommended by the CDC. They've helped in the establishment of an internal COVID-19 website that outlines all the aspects of COVID-19 response. They've also collaborated with the safety department, infection prevention, control, and emergency management in the creation of videos that demonstrate the specific techniques for donning and doffing of personal protective equipment needed in the care of COVID-19 patients. The team has been essential in the re-emergence planning of the organization. We've worked with frontline workers in areas such as the ambulatory clinics, the procedural units, and the satellites around the region. Many of these areas had limited the amount of patients during the initial phases of the pandemic, which kept many staff members at home. Staff that may not have been emerged in the COVID-19 planning and preparations needed education and guidance on all of our new safety initiatives and guidelines. Site managers were deployed to these areas to extensive demonstration and teaching, allowing frontline workers to feel comfortable and protective, caring for the potential COVID-19 patients that they may see. This has allowed the organization to safely welcome back patients and for staff in these areas to provide safe and optimal care. The nurses on the team were able to identify areas of improvement within our systems and work towards resolutions. Building on their strong clinical skills and nursing experiences, they were able to identify the needs, worries, and oftentimes frustrations of the clinical teams and work with them in identifying systems and processes that work best for each individual service. Having nurses on the team from many different areas of the hospital allowed them, allow them to have better understanding of how each individual unit works and possible barriers to the standardized approaches that we are trying to implement. The biocontainment team has become an essential part of the care teams, promoting safety and quality care while easing fears through increased education and support. 
John, you talk about, I think, just the importance of how each of your um, team members had to adapt the approaches for the specific environments and departments. I can certainly speak to um, the NICU, for instance, where I work in the neonatal ICU um, and our geography and layout of our unit is very different. And I just, I can't tell you how valuable it was to take what were the necessary precautions, but not necessarily a one size fits all and adapt them to the particular environment. And your team was truly exceptional in doing that. I know that my team members truly appreciated that. In framing expectations and managing fear, stress and anxiety when faced with a crisis or the unknowns as COVID has evolved is critical to support patients and families and staff. How has this novel and innovative team helped to promote safe and effective care for patients, families, and staff? So I think that we all know that nurses continue to lead in innovative ways of increasing patient and staff safety. The COVID-19 pandemic allowed a group of nurses to highlight the skills acquired through simulation trainings of patients with highly infectious diseases. The expertise and experience of these nurses allowed them to participate and guide care at the bedside in a way that was novel to the institution. The biocontainment team nurses were able to educate and support their colleagues along for optimal care of our patients and families. The bedside nurses were then able to build their confidence and decrease anxiety when caring for the COVID-19 patient. The biocontainment nurses worked with infection prevention and control and allowing parents to remain at the bedside with their sick child as well. Parents were able to receive food to the bedside and continue to receive the same psychosocial support that was in place pre-COVID. At Boston Children's Hospital, we were able to use FaceTime and Zoom technologies to update families at the bedside while limiting entry into the patient's room, providing more safety measures. The hospital worked extremely hard in maintaining their stance on patient family-centered care, knowing the importance of support for the patient as well as their family. I think this was so important, John, and I think we definitely saw um, that our ability to really need to keep the focus on family-centered care while keeping our patients and our staff safe was so integral during this time. I think being a pediatric institution is different than an adult institution, obviously, because our patients need their parents and families um, to be present to partner in that care. So I think that that was also crucial um, as we looked at ways to optimize practice and safety. We continue to navigate through and build upon lessons learned, including what we can adopt as best practices throughout and hopefully well beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. How has the biocontainment team helped in transforming practice at Boston Children's Hospital? Building on their strong clinical skills and nursing experience, the biocontainment nurses were able to identify the needs, the worries and the frustrations of the clinical teams and work with them in identifying systems and processes that work best for each individual service. The biocontainment team has trained quarterly since 2014 using the high-tech simulations to guide their practice and create guidelines and protocols for safe and optimal care of patients with these highly infectious diseases. COVID-19 allowed the team to move out of that virtual realm into the clinical areas, sharing the expertise gained through their training. The team has become an essential part of the care teams, promoting safety and quality care while easing fears through increased education and support. This innovative team will continue to build upon their clinical skills and use the experiences from COVID-19 to continue building guidelines and protocols that will be transferable to other possible infectious outbreaks in the future and hopefully not in the near future. The biocontainment team has successfully trained all areas of the organization to safely care for COVID-19 patients and continues in providing excellent care for our pediatric populations. We are going to pause now to turn to the audience to ask a question. In your response to your question, please leave your city and country location. Our question is this, what were one or two practice or communication processes that were most instrumental in preparing your teams during COVID-19? And did you use high-tech simulation during your training? John, in what other ways has the biocontainment team helped to assure that patients, families, and staff are protected from COVID-19? So the biocontainment team became active members of the hospital's rapid response teams and was present at over 150 events between March 2020 and August of 2020. 
These teams respond to all hospital emergencies that may require some type of medical intervention. The role of the biocontainment nurse was to ensure that all members of the team providing care for the patient are donned in the proper personal protective equipment and ensure that all safety initiatives and guidelines are being followed during these situations. Uh, the biocontainment team was staffed with four nurses for each 12 hour shift, ensuring 24 hour coverage. Each nurse carried a hospital issued phone that was accessible to all disciplines within the organization. During the period of activation between March and August, 2020, the biocontainment team answered over 4,900 calls in regard to COVID, personal protective equipment, transfers, and education. This number does not include the number of text messages that were received during that time. We are still compiling the data, but expect that number to be at least triple or quadruple the amount of phone calls that we received. That is truly extraordinary. What's next for the biocontainment team at Boston Children's Hospital? So that's a good question, Cheryl. I think right now, although the biocontainment team is not activated at the moment, we're always ready to switch over from our virtual to a real-time schedule. The team will continue with our simulation trainings that occur four times a year, along with yearly regulatory drills that allow us to showcase the preparation that we have put into place. Working with infection prevention and control, we will continue to navigate the COVID-19 pandemic and continue to be aware of any other emerging infectious diseases from around the world. The COVID leadership team at Boston Children's Hospital actively follows infection rates within the city, the state, and the country. The work that was done during our activation has allowed for frontline workers to continue to practice and work safely during these stressful times, caring for our fragile pediatric population. John, the work you and your team have done and continue to do has truly been amazing. Your leadership with biocontainment to ensure safety for our patients, families, and frontline clinicians has been second to none. As leaders, managing stress and uncertainty during crisis while framing expectations and retaining flexibility to rapidly shift priorities is essential. You model this every day in your leadership, John, doing the most important work there is caring for the children, families, and staff who rely on us. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today on Open Pediatrics. Thank you, Cheryl. This has been a great experience.